Okay, so we are looking at chapter 13 this week, which is uh, the aged and the elderly in society and sociology. Uh, so chapter 13 has four sections to look at. The first is who are the elderly and aging in society? We'll look at the difference between senior age groups, young, old, middle, old, and old, old. We'll describe the graying of the United States as the population experiences increased life expectancies. It's a really key issue. Um, I maybe talk about this in the class, but I last couple of years with one of my uh, with my wife actually have had a lot of experiences in the healthcare system, and you know talking to doctors, there is a lot of concern just about the graying of the population. Life expectancy goes up, but then do we have the social services, whether that's social security, healthcare, um, uh, retirement homes for the aged, to accommodate this graying of our population. So this is a really key issue, um, almost a perfect storm, I think, that we're not quite prepared for in my mind. So we'll look at the graying of the United States and the population increases due to increased life expectancies, and we'll look at aging as a global issue. Uh, second, we'll focus on the process of aging. We'll consider the biological, sociological, and psychological changes in aging. We'll look at the birth and the field of uh, geriatrics. We'll focus on attitude towards death and dying and how they affect the elderly. We'll look at the five stage, uh, stages of grief developed by Elizabeth uh, Kubler-Ross. Section three is focused on challenges facing the elderly. We'll look at the historical and current trends of poverty among elderly populations. We'll recognize ageist thinking and ageist attitudes in, in individuals and institutions. So as a definition here, ageism is like you see a commercial and they have a person, an elderly or aged person with a walker and that person is feeble and they make fun of that person. That's an example of ageism. And then lastly, we'll look at elderly individuals and their risks of being mistreated and abused, which unfortunately we see a lot of this in nursing homes and other contexts in the United States and other cultures. And then lastly, in section four, we'll focus on our theoretical perspectives on aging. So as you know by now, conflict theory, functionalism, symbolic interactionism, how do those apply to aging and the elderly in society as we look at chapter 13 this week. Mm -hmm.